All right, thank you. Yes, that's right. So this is a very unusual event that we've been asked to talk about. Uh, you also might have heard it called a brown algae bloom or a serratian bloom. And um, yeah, so it's a dinoflagellate. And so back in, just looking for the arrow keys here, back in April of uh, this past year, a group of scientists at UNH, including Liz Harvey, noticed something really odd at their buoy near the Isle of Shoals or Afton Island. Uh, so this, uh, this buoy uh, monitors carbonate chemistry, and they observed that there was this really low PC, PCO2 concentration there in April, and that's over their, over their 20 year time series, that's the lowest they ever saw. Uh, so this it indicated that there was a, a really large bloom occurring, and when they were went out to take samples, they found that their nets were absolutely full full of this uh, uh, brown goo. And under the microscope, they, they could see that this was uh, the dinoflagellate species, Trichos malari. Uh, and then they were making these observations as part of a time series monitoring effort. So they were going out there every couple of weeks, and they kept finding really high concentrations of, of this one species. And so that's the really unusual part in that typically you have one species, often a, um, a diatom, dominate the spring bloom, and then that gets grazed down by other species, particularly copepods, and then another phytoplankton species becomes more dominant or there's a greater mix of multiple species. Uh, but apparently that was, uh, nothing was able to graze down this bloom and it just persisted month after month after month. So the UNH group started reaching out to colleagues to let them know what they were seeing and also asking what they were seeing. And it soon became apparent that this bloom of tripos was uh, actually really widespread throughout the Western Gulf of Maine. Uh, so through multiple email uh, chains, colleagues throughout the region shared that they too had been seeing this large uh, and persistent bloom. Um, and there were various observations being made. So uh, some of them were just eyewitness accounts and others were part of broader surveys. And, and uh, different monitoring efforts like the UNH one. Uh, but one of the clearest pictures of the, the entire breadth of this uh, bloom came from Kim Hyde at Northeast uh, Fishery Science Center. So she shared a number of these composite satellite images and that showed anomalously high chlorophyll concentrations across the uh, Western Gulf of Maine. So in these figures, you have just uh, a composite of one week in July uh, to early August. And you can see an anomaly there that's way higher than we usually expect. And then with this sort of looking at the entire time series of 1998 to 2023, you just see at the very bottom, it might be hard for some of you to see that this is just a crazy high year of uh, chlorophyll. Uh, so we at Nearcoos, we found out about this event, like many others, through email chains. We realized that uh, monitoring this event uh, falls under the broad Nearcoos mission, but also more specifically under this um, Oh, I gotta go to the next slide. This uh, the falls under the uh, ISMN, the Integrated Sentinel Monitoring Network uh, Scientific and Implementation Plan. So that ISMN network or ISMN was formed just over ten years ago with this uh, recognition that sustainability of the region is threatened by ecosystem and climate change, and in order to be resilient and to adapt. Um, to those changes, stakeholders and decision makers need to make, be aware of those changes. And a strategy, for, a strategy for doing that is the ISMN, which is designed to leverage ongoing disconnected monitoring efforts uh, to detect these ecosystem changes and to form collaborations to better understand and communicate those changes. So in this instance uh, the, of the Trifos bloom, we let this informal. We we let this informal group of collaborators know that New York Cruise was willing to uh, activate the ISMN resources that we did have to help coordinate these monitoring efforts. And we thought that the first thing that we should do is to just get the to get the word out, communicate with stakeholders and the public to let them know that this tripos bloom was was happening, that it was highly unusual, that it could have some consequences, and we should all be aware of that. Um, so ultimately, the UNH media uh, relations heard about these efforts and stepped up uh, to lead that press release. So that was a success. And then thankfully, the bloom fizzled out. Uh, so we didn't have that hazard, which was a, a, a hypoxic uh, event or a die off. That just didn't happen. But still, this network of collaborators is really interested in understanding this event. And uh, one, we want to know if it could happen again, what might be some of the other impacts. So. We're putting on the seminar and workshop in about two weeks. 
Uh, the seminar is open to the public. I encourage you all to uh, listen in on it. So just Google that. And then there's a workshop that w where, we're, where we are going to address some of these questions. And I believe I am out of time. All right, thank you.